This blustery winter day is decidedly not in California. That's because I am in Centralia, Washington at my friend Becky's Antique Mall, Tower Avenue Antiques. They just had a record December. A lot of people have been really selling up a storm and I needed to get in here and really try to redo the booth. My friend Stephanie is here with us today. Hello. And she's looking at lovely jewelry, of course. Yes, this is Tom's. That. You can tell right away, yes, he gets such good stuff. He's running Juliana right through here, and uh, I've seen some Weiss and Eisenberg. And I see a nice Regency set, that pink there. I know we love the pinks. So yes, and then this is my showcase. I redid this, I added to it. I really am trying to focus strictly on the Western and really consolidate it into one place where a lot of my best stuff is. This beautiful statue here is priced at $32.50. It is Sundown Harvest. And that is a David Manuel piece. And this one next to it is very nice. Also, this is Carl Wagner. This is priced at $14.50. So I do have some high-powered stuff in here, but we're really not here to spend a lot of time on my space. I just want to show you what we've done. And then we're going to go shopping next door and show you a place we've never been before. So I really opened up the booth and I tried to put a bunch of pink out front because I do believe pink is back. We also put some nice things in the showcase so that they're a little more protected. Still have this really great Bradley and Hubbard fellow from the Army in the Spanish-American War. And some cute stuff too. So it ranges a bunch of different categories. I've got a bunch of cute silhouettes, some nice figures. I managed to get the remaining Bing and Grondel Seagull together in one place where it looks good. And I had sold the Dallas Morning News stand that always held all of this paper stuff. So it was all over and I had to get that back in order. Having said that, the store staff here was really, really very kind to me. They tried to keep things in order while I was gone and I so appreciate them. I think this looks pretty good. I just changed and rearranged a little bit, added some things here. The nude from Royal Copenhagen. Some of these are really very pretty pieces and I think they'll sell here because the sales have been very brisk. Added some Roseville and Owens. I opened this up by moving this desk over here. This is the first time you've been able to walk in a circle through this booth since I've had it. And I really think it's an improvement. I just think that people are going to be able to see through things, be drawn back in. It had gotten to where I sort of had walls at the front of the booth and you really couldn't see into the booth. And that is foreboding to some people. Oh, how nice. They put my stained glass window on an easel at the front. But now let's go look at some things that are different here in Centralia in the antique and vintage world. So we're out on Tower Avenue where all the antique malls are and the other cool specialty shops here. And right down the block, we see the Shady Lady and they are open. I'm curious to get your impression of this place because they have a lot of boutique items and vintage clothing and jewelry and furnishings. And it's a mix of vintage and true antique and then decorator things. It's, it's pretty good. I think you'll like it. Mm -hmm. I see the Antique Fest is scheduled and I hope to come back and do appraisals at that on the 2nd through 4th of August. This is what it's like when you come in. There's vignettes. It has a real feel to it. And then we have the sign for the Bordello Museum. Yes, that's right. Exactly. We'll show the Bordello Museum in a little bit. I really like the faces and they seem to be all sorts of different ones. I think they're singing or blowing you a kiss. Ah, no, there's our mark. You can tell it was homemade in a small kiln. It's a little thin. I have not seen anything by Hagee Ceramic Studio before. San Antonio. Interesting, Alamo Pottery was based near there. I wonder if there might be any relationship, like somebody worked for them and went off on their own. This one is sweet. Oh yeah, that might be good for your garden, huh? My yard art. Yeah. Hey there, how are you? I hope you don't mind, I have the camera rolling. This is Holly Phelps, and uh, she is the owner of Shady Lady, and she has just the most fantastic shop, and I have been wanting to show you all for a long time. And finally, this is the day. This is my friend Stephanie, and she's doing her garden, so. Oh, thank you. Yeah. And the starling. So. Well, this place is a really fun mix of all sorts of things, and the emphasis is on vintage, even in the clothing and stuff, but there are some newer things as well, some home items, but 
Mainly you are looking at antique and vintage and she just told me that like the other stores here in Centralia and really it seems like in a lot of places antiques and vintage did really well this holiday season. A lot of people buying things that were singular as gifts because they weren't seeing anything really amazing in the malls and so um, she said they did very well and I have to say that seems to be the prevailing sentiment. Oh how neat the way they're using the old horns from the Victrolas. Yeah. Yeah, they have a real flair for putting it together here. It is not like most stores that you're going to see around. Ooh, I like that. I think they're right about 1980s, that enamel butterfly set with the earrings. $32 seems fine considering how cool it is and the great colors, which seem very current. Yellows and pinks are coming back from what I can see, at least with the vintage people. And then there's more shops in town that we'll probably get a chance to show you too. So it's it's just a different thing than what I do as far as it's more about putting together a look using things that you have in your home now and vintage and antique things this is a great antique pickled bamboo etager it's in really good shape very sturdy it's got the nice fabric on it that's still in good condition this is a true antique. They have it priced at $289. I love the old curved staircase. This was a boutique that was remodeled in the 70s and they still have the 70s interior, but this building's from the 19 teens and it's a very interesting combination of things. I like the old oiler. Things that you find in the garage, you know, they're selling now 24 on that. Only $12 on this piece of glass, which actually does have some age. That's a 1980s piece. Back here we see a really neat church light which I think is very pretty and I like the cut work. And this painted dresser, $189, it needs a little bit of restoration, although if you like shabby chic, it is true shabby chic. Nobody had to fake that. This would be a $500 dresser restored. I saw a very similar piece in similar condition at an estate sale in New Jersey and they were asking almost as much as they're asking here in an antique store. I love these dresser gals. These sat on the dressers in the teens, 20s, and 30s. This one appears to be Japanese. $24 is not a bad deal because the Japanese pieces are not always well painted in the face, but she is. She has very delicate eyes and there's pupils and you get the detail that usually you just see with the German pieces. This is 1930s. It is possible that that would sell for double that and I don't have any in stock, so that may go with me. I like this encrusted mirror. Hello, everybody. And again, you get the definite feel for the way that this store is set up because we have this piece that was made by a furniture company in Portland. There were a lot of furniture companies in Portland, Tacoma, and Seattle because the Northwest was so far away that shipping was expensive and there was lots of wood here. But it was so far to ship things out of the area that over time they mostly have gone away. So surprisingly, with all the wood here, not a lot of furniture made here. But this was made by G. Schindler in Portland. They're priced at $285. That's going to date right around 1900 to 1910. And then you see again this interesting mix of antique and vintage and newer items. But it has a real feel. I like wicker, of course very boho but definitely coming back in with the golden girls look from the 80s too so I think it will have some staying power this is only $18 for the curved basket and they're giving you a suggestion of how you could use it generally rolled towels or that sort of thing would be kept in this originally or it might have been hung and even had a plant that hung out of it depending on how people used it back in the day this store has figured out how to be able when you're doing a lot of furniture and home accessories that are big how to stack things in a way that you can see everything it's attractive you could get to it you can see the price and you could actually buy it so it is shoppable even though there's a lot in a small space because you know these folks have to pay rent so they've got to be able to get a lot in a small space some fun lighting. I especially like this one over me here. 1910s oak piece of furniture. A nice plain piece, but it's got good pith rays. This is the sort of thing I associate with a lot of the craftsman homes here in Centralia. Centralia was a very strongly growing burgeoning community between 1900 and 1920. And so there's a lot of craftsman bungalows here. And that's part of the reason that people were attracted to move here who were interested in antiques and vintage because 
all those sort of places in Seattle had shot up in price and you could get one here and lo and behold the antique industry grew. $198 on this French style vanity. The three octave chord organ, yes that's a 1970s version. Bananas Magazine, I remember that when I was a kid. Charlie's Angels want you to watch them because why not? Everyone else was. Lots of carboys here. I like this one with the trees around the edge. This has some age and of course we think of them in terms of people keeping pennies in them but this one actually has its original functional piece there. We're going to come back through here. I always like these Pierce work chairs from the 1910s. These are to be used on porches on hot summer's days before you had air conditioning because they would vent. The shoe shop, $125. That's actually, I believe, from the old Zimmerman shoes, which is a bridal shop down the street. It used to be an antique mall I was in. And then this piece, uh, you'd have to love the green, but I do like the stained glass and it's $98. China cabinets are so inexpensive now, it's hard to imagine. This is a nice piece here with the hard stone. $24, again, this seems pretty good. Let's see if we can tell age. I would say with the green base, this might be as late as the 1990s, but I think that is a good deal for what it is. And that may also come with me. This is the Bath Depot. It smells great in here. Lots of soaps and fragrances and a lot of things that I'm sure really were great features during the holidays. Old ice cream freezers are suddenly really popular collectibles. I think people are actually using them in some cases. This seems like it has everything that goes with it. It's a good blue color. Looks like about 1960. Could be cleaned up a little on the outside where it's gotten some rust, but it's $45. And these days, $45 seems to be about the price on those. Now, I like this. This is not an old piece of furniture, but it has been repurposed from an old window that's truly old, old wainscot that's truly old. Uh, they didn't just take an existing piece of furniture and paint it white and scrape it. They actually gave some thought to using old material in order to repurpose, and I like that. This is cool, old Wells Fargo and Company toy the Overland Wagon from about 1970. These have a very strange look for plastic and I would say these likely were done about 1980 from the color. I like these candle holders. I can't say I've seen this particular ceramic before but I don't see anything that tells us where they came from. Again we've already seen one interesting thing from an obscure company we'd never heard of before. There were thousands of pottery companies, 2,000 in California alone at the end of World War II. So knowing them all, well, that's a big order. Piece of stoneware here looks like Japanese from about 1980. They were starting to catch on to the success of Pottery Craft, the company I wrote the book on. Always been a big fan of our Atkinson Fox. All right, we're going to go upstairs. And I love the way that they have the staircase with all of the old stars. And it makes me so happy they didn't take out these chandeliers that were hung in the 1970s. This was a radical remodel that was inappropriate to this building when it was done, but now, 50 years later, it just seems really cool and funky. And it's perfect for a place that really features a lot of vintage clothing. This is quite the haberdashery here. vintage scarves. You know, some of this is going to be resale clothing and then some of it is going to have some definite age. This lamb's wool piece here is going to date to about 1980. We have our lovelies here and this wonderful 70s neon and then the entry to the bordello tour. Yes indeed, this is where ladies did business. This was a lumber town, a lot of young men here 120 years ago with nothing to do and no way to spend their money and no connections and no relationships and well you can imagine what it was like in the frontier days. This was the hidden back area of this upstairs. These look like little dressing rooms but hmm, that was not their original function. This is a really cool swag lamp. I like the green. So it's a fun store. A big mix of different things. 
I feel so stylish. So it's cute and fun and it's got a good vibe and you'll find some antique and vintage and you will find things that you can buy for resale here. I'm going to go pick up that dresser jar that I saw. And you might be able to decorate yourself as well as your house in a place like this. It's certainly all about style. The descent down the staircase is lots of fun. It just can't be the curved staircase. I always wanted one in a house. I know they take up a lot of room. Very classic Hager piece. That was actually one of their floral lines, and by the 1980s, this style was back in, and they weren't selling it as cheap floral wear anymore. I like the scale. It's been restored and repainted. $69 is a good price. I like the brass. Dr. Pepper. I know I have a Dr. Pepper fan out there. Wow, this is a great vignette. I like the telescope very, very much. $85 seems impossibly cheap. I'm going to check to see if it has vintage, but... It looks old enough for the price. I'm thinking it might be 50 years old now. Now back here we've got a lot of cool things. Oh, Akiva, yes. I like things that look old and beat up. Oh yeah, well exactly, especially with garden stuff. That's what people are looking for. If they wanted new, they'd go down the street. There's a great garden store down the street that sells brand new, but this is... Like, it's got the look of age, and this is the thing that saved me when I had my rollover accident, is I had one of these in the back of the car, and it was like a big spring. It kept everything from flying forward at me. Was that the one on mine that was on my deck that I mm -hmm. <laughs> So much about the way they put it together. You know, there's a old galvanized bucket full of sheet music, and there's a bin full of pictures. There's a show in Spokane called Farm Chicks, and there's some country-based vintage shows like that in this area as well. And this is the look. It's the combination of thrifted items, vintage items, and some new and repurposed and remade items in a way that makes a rich and interesting interior. So $89 for the lamp. Zeno would like that. I actually like this one over here for $69. But that's a very specific reddish pinkish color $62 actually oh yeah that looks like an early 80s interior the classic wicker shelf that looks like something straight out of three's company although theirs had a huge pottery craft base at the top of it there's a nice way to stack luggage and store things $48 on that this is not a Caro now. Other companies did copy their idea, but it's a little damaged, so I'm going to leave it sitting there. Linen's in a rack. This obviously was repainted. I don't really mind the color, though. Ooh, now this is cool. This is more of a modernist thing and not what I would expect here. And there's not a price on it. Hmm. I think I'm going to go ask her about this because this is more up my alley. Wow, look at that beautiful, massive scale. It is being restored, interesting. Well, I will be curious to see how they do the restoration, whether they just restore the working parts or if they actually do repainting. In a store like this, they may be more inclined to leave things original, which I think is maybe the right answer. This piece here is one that I've pointed out as a sleeper. It's as is, unfortunately. $14 would be a good price, but it just says made in USA. It is actually Franciscan's El Patio line, and it is the handled relish, and that actually sells for about double that. Applique and a very cute little mid-century tile top table for only $98. These days, that's a pretty good price with the pastels. I'm almost tempted by that because I'll bet the legs would come off. Gosh, if it was just a little cheaper, I would take that to Florida with me. So this is a painted chest, faux painted, 1880s, 1890s. This was something that would have been inexpensive. It is sold. You don't see many of these in good condition because they were a little lighter wood, like a pine or fir or that sort of thing, and then painted rather than done in some sort of a veneer. It's really cute now, and it's very country, and it is true antique, and I'm not surprised it's sold. It looks like it's in good condition. Well, in antique stores, when you see, I guess, new dealers that you'd say have new stuff, it's not really vintage, it's not really this. Yeah. She has put the new things in with the vintage and with the antique. 
that it works. Yeah, it's, it's really fun. Yeah, it's like boho, it's design, it's it is fun and, and fun. It's 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 how a certain group of collectors really want to collect and decorate and set it up. Not everybody wants just showcases full of their uh, favorite things in rows. If you're enjoying this video, please do click the thumbs up to like it. It does really help us with the YouTube folks. If they know that you're enjoying this, then they tell other people about it and we can grow this antique community together. Also, if you are interested in memberships or Patreon, please look at the memberships line below the dash line in the description of any video. It all helps the channel and we are very grateful for all your support. Back in the old days, this was the New York department store and nowadays this is the new Centralia Square Antique Mall. I was in th with them for years. That's where I started my career in the Centralia Square building. But the mall moved here about six months ago. The last time I was here, I think I showed you the outside of the windows, but they had just opened. We hadn't been in. And now we're going to get a chance to go past the H.G. Wells machine and see how things are going here. They have some dealers who were with us in the old centralia square and then they have some things that are fresh that we haven't seen before this is a really cool piece here this dog bronze and this is by moignier i like the old payphone this is a really cool celestial navigation globe this is japanese and this is going to be from sometime around the second world war priced a little over a thousand dollars sherman army sword so they have some different things this place had been an antique mall before. It had been part of the Pacific Galleries chain, and then when they closed, it sat empty for a long time. So we're really glad to see it back. Look at this great table for $4.95. A lot of taxidermy here, but this does sell well in this part of the country. Snowshoes. And this is, again, a form of lodge decorating that is very popular in the West. Oh, look at that hanging scale. That is really neat. I have not seen a hanging version of one of those in a really long time, and it looks like someone had this restored at some point. Old gas iron here. If you did not live in a place with electricity in the 1920s, you got a very pretty blue Coleman, antique gas powered, and antique now, because this is 100 years ago. This is about the time in the 1920s when a lot of electrical household appliances were invented and became mainstream. Nice hammered copper and brass and tin from the early 1900s. I like the candy mold. This one is a chocolate mold and it looks like it's lambs. That'd be cute for Easter. The rabbit chocolate mold here as well. El Paxo cigar brings contentment. Oh wow, they turned the snowshoes into sconces. The antlers. Yeah, oh, that's clever. I'll give it that. I mean, I could see that in Alaska or in the mountains here. This is an unusual piece. This is from a fire department. We don't see these nearly as often as we see the railroad lanterns. A lot of these went away as soon as they had lanterns that were part of the fire trucks, and a lot of them were scrapped in the war, so they're hard to find. That one's priced at $8.50. Old bus. Oh, that's cool. An old bus fare box. I had one of those once that was on my bucket list of things to buy and sell. I think I got $4.50 for mine. They've got $6.50 on this one, but theirs is a little fancier and more restored. I couldn't explain it, but... Oh, with the painting on it with the cowboy? It doesn't even matter, but it's a horn. For some reason, those I go... Oh, in the middle of certain decor, and they're kind of cool to decorate with. Yeah, well, and you kind of figure the cow bones and the cow skulls are found out in the field. This is really cool. It looks like a camera, but when you open it up, it is actually a portable record player. And boy, you almost never see those. This is from about 1920, and you would wind it up, and they have 650 priced on that. It would play the old 78s. That is really cool. I haven't seen one of those in years, and they've got some really good cameras. The number two brownie stereo. This century diaphragm camera is really great, too. Oh, that's really neat. Yeah, they called it that because at one time, people who didn't have any work would go and make boxes and things out of just little chip card pieces of wood but i think it goes all the way back to polish and german and black forest carving in the carpathian mountains and it's just it's really beautiful that is a really fantastic piece actually now in their original location they had a lot of ceramics and they do here as well i like the collection of hat pin holders and these actually are hat pin holders because they don't have 
closed bases. If they're closed bases, they're muffineers, which were used to shake sugar and other powdered things on, unless they have a big hole in the middle, and then, you know, that was also a hat pin holder. So those are some ways to be able to tell the difference. That one has a plug. That one may have been for powder. A little bit of costume jewelry here. I like the Matisse clips with that spatter enameling. You don't see that very often. Oh, it's nice to see a bunch of arts and crafts era pottery in one place. I always like the way the slip is done under the glaze and it's just got such nice color. I like the green one especially, Loy Nellard. That was McCoy actually, yeah, they did, believe it or not, because I think of McCoy as being this funky onyx stuff, but they made some really, really good stuff. Oh, remember at Westlake when we used to sell the Pacific stoneware out of oh, Portland? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Bennett Welsh stuff and there's his signature right on the bottom. Gosh, only $15. I can't believe this stuff isn't more. I think I'm going to buy this Howard Pierce Animals. I always liked his work. He and his wife did it together, actually, out in the desert in California. $24 on the sparrow with the tail up, and the mice are cute at $20 each. They did some very elaborate figures that are large that are worth some real money, too, and very modernist. Oh, wow, this reminds me of your bellows table. This one's a drum. A drum. Lion and Healy marching bass drum from the 1940s, and they turned it into a table. I love it. So far, I'm very impressed. I think the mall looks really good. Here's a bunch of Fostoria June, and this is such a pretty pattern. Love the yellow. The quality is so good. And they've got all of the different sizes. Elegant Depression Glass really hasn't gone up in price in a long time. It's sort of got caught in the downdraft of Depression Glass, and really, it's so lovely, and the quality is so much better. We've got a whiskey still lamp. Oh, cool. An old still lamp. Oh, that's great. Maybe I should do that with mine. I haven't been able to sell my old still. There you go. That's an interesting mirror behind it, too. It's isn't Chinese, it? isn't it? Or No, it says Chapman, made in Spain. I haven't seen this before. Yeah, I like that. It seems like sort of that really thin, cheap mirror because probably they didn't have a lot of money, but I love the painting. It's actually very quaint. There's more upstairs. This was a very, very big store. After it was the New York department store, it became a furniture store. And so it's divided up into lots of little booths. Ah, lamps and parts and shades. That could definitely be useful to know about. This is interesting. Timkin bearings. Roll the load. These ladies from 1963 are very sweet. Timken had some other calendars that were a little more, well, she's supposed to be from Brazil, Ipe. Contua from Peru. Tudor Rose from England. Hmm, I don't think that was her real name. And Wattle Blossoms from Australia. They're referring to the flowers, of course. So this is similar to the antique mall that was in Centralia Square, and what they're doing is what we did there, which is where they're using a lot of the top floor for furniture overflow, and then they do have some dealers, and they're able to rent space at a better price. This is a pretty Czech pottery picture. They did very bright colorations in an attempt to capture the essence of bizarre wear by Clarice Cliff in England, which was very, very deco designed and is worth lots of money but check pieces are fun to collect this one's lost a little of its paint it's only 25 dollars but that would have to be touched up blue mountain pottery swan the inflato pump i've had that before blow up a balloon without doing anything on your own ah yes 80s metal bands lots of hair this is a type of european i guess i'd call it folk art it is carved it's very glossy, it's very precise, and honestly a little overdone, but it's got a clock set in it. These were done in Germany in the 1970s. I've seen them in the United States before. This one is priced at $2.99. It's a very specific look, but if you decorate it around it, it could be really fun. Now this one actually has some Hawaiian writing in it. This is a tapa cloth, popular to hang in the early 60s when the Polynesian design was in style. Hello, everybody. And I just love them. It's priced at $1.99, which is about the right price, or else I'd be tempted to get it. Then we have some very pretty pink depression glass. I'm hoping that with the return of pink and decorating that maybe the pink depression will catch on again like the green has. A bunch of salt and pepper shakers here. 
I like Idaho for $5.95. These are later. They're a little more lightweight. These are 70s with plastic stoppers made in Japan. IAAC did a lot of those. They're always a match set rather than a theme. The older ones were typically themes. Big Bear Studio done in Big Bear Lake, California, where they would just literally carve into these pieces and turn them into shakers. Watch your step. This was a furniture store for a while, so there are these steps up. The Anvil for $4.50. That seems like a price these big ones sell for now. Interesting saddle makers bench here. We see these in the West from time to time. I'm sure other parts of the country too. Occasionally I see them in Kentucky where a lot of saddle and tack was made. Priced at $150. $40. I just put one out for sale and I think I put $35 on mine. So I guess mine's the cheapest in town since it's not the only one. That's a good thing to know. Wilkinson Flow Blue. I like this with the feet. This was done to be a jardiner by itself. This is really neat. The Handy Andy Crane. Nice piece of tin litho made in the 1930s during the peak of tin lithography toys in the United States. That one was made in Pennsylvania. Old candlestick phone at 220. That's about what I have on mine. We usually see violin bottles. We don't often see the banjos and the banjos were supposed to have this holder. Handmade in America. This is really cool. This is enamelware, $75. It's got a little damage, but you don't see these very often. Cream City Ware, and this is a cream can. And you notice it has separate sections for cream or milk or your butter fats or however you're using it, and it has a handle. So that's a pretty neat piece for the price. This dealer has some very pretty Fenton pieces. I like the painted red piece here. I haven't had a lot on the red. The yellow bird is done in a natural style, which is really neat. And then of course the Burmese fairy lamp at $239.50. The one piece fairy light at $160. This is a very hard color combination and with the nude in it, they're really not wrong to ask 400 for that piece. Very hard to find. They have a lot of really cool pieces in this space. It's obviously a specialty. The couple who run this place when they had the original Centralia Square had some really great dealers in glass and a lot of them came over with them. Very cute small pyre cooling cabinet here with the screen door. Handmade about 1910. It's on sale for $355. We do still see primitives in Washington State because Centralia was the center of a large market area that was very rural. G.I. Joe baseball game. That's a really cool thing from 1946, just after World War II. And this was made in Aberdeen, not far from here. Aberdeen is where Kurt Cobain grew up. This is a very scarce thing for local interest, and that's why it's priced at $5.95. Only $25 on this. This is the classic Tecron. This was a very popular clock with the alabaster body in the 1950s with the Roman numerals and $25. You know, they don't sell for a lot more than that, and I kind of think they should. It's a great look for the price. I really like the Emerson in the black. $65 is a fair price these days. These have gotten a lot harder to find lately. $125 for the clock radio, and then the Gilfillan radio, which says it's in a known condition, is priced at $75. The old thimble drones, those are great. $275, $295. These are a little older than the one I sold because they are metal. A later Lionel freight train set, still with the steam railroad, but this one's going to be from the 1960s. But I really like this Shuko Delfino battery operated boat. You do not see that very often. It's from the 50s. People would leave the batteries in them and they'd go bad. This is another good piece. Friction powered. It, the box is what makes this one. And it's an early helicopter. It's Japanese from the 50s. Coe's Mercantile, Randy and Debbie Co were so instrumental to the writing of my first book. They helped me with the photography. They've taught me so much about Fenton and other things over the years. Uh, they are amazing. They have made a living doing this their entire adult lives, raised a family being antique dealers, so it can be done. They're very serious about what they do and they know their stuff. This is a great Murano double bird with the Vaseline holding it. That actually is a piece I'd be tempted to consider buying at that price. They do have some Royal Dalton. They are pricing them for today, only $29, $39. The dogs do sell for more. They've got $99 on that. Cebus was a good outfit out of New Jersey. This is priced at $49.50. I love their tags. 
they do things right. They do things the way I always hoped I would if I became a dealer. And I have to say, I've made myself too busy to keep up and do things as well as they do. But their stuff's tagged. They have great descriptions. This is part of why they are really, really good dealers and they sell a lot. And they sell a lot of stuff that you might say, well, I see this stuff in other people's spaces, but they sell it because they price it for today. They keep up on their merchandise. If something sits for a while, they mark it down or they move it to another location. They're just very smart about what they do. And of course they have online presence too. Westmoreland Pottery, I like the Mary Gregory on the black. Ooh, I like that, that's Alexandrite. This is the stuff that it'll look different in a different color. Um, under different light. So like it's lavender now, and then you get it up against natural and it starts to turn more to blue. Yeah. Yeah, it's really neat. Because I saw the phone in your hand, I should have recognized it. <laughs> this from the backside. Well, this is Kevin and Kevin and Maureen are running Centralia Square in the new location and the store looks great. You've been open here how long now? Just under a year, actually. I thought so, yeah. Well, I'm so pleased for you. The mall looks great. You've got some really nice merchandise, and I'm happy I found something I uh, can buy. Yeah, there you go. I really like the pre-prohibition glasses, and they put black in it so you can see the designs. That's what's really cool about them. You'd fill it up with whiskey or that kind of thing, and then you would see their advertisement come out on them. And they've got these priced between about 45 and 75 Some of them are pretty hard to find. Remember the Aqua Velva Man? The Aqua Velva Man? Oh, they used to have a Oh, yes. The Aqua Velva Man. Oh, yes, that's right. I do remember the Aqua Velva Man. And I remember when I was five, I bought my dad a bottle of Aqua Velva. And he looked like he was going to throw up. And I never understood why. Well, my parents had quit drinking. And my mom informed me later that when he was in the Navy and they were out to sea for three months, that all the sailors got together and poured all of their cologne into one thing to use as alcohol and it made them so sick that he hated the smell of aqua <laughs> more antique radios spartan ah now i've heard of the spartan radio so now that makes more sense i did not know their parent company this one is a filco transitone very pretty and this one's a great art deco style here i haven't seen this in a while and you would turn the wheel here and that gets your stations into where you want them. That's an old Sears airline. And they've got a really nice little tabletop and a Zenith tombstone radio. It's really great to see this here. Centralia Square always had a good radio dealer and there aren't many people who can keep those running these days. There's Maureen. She is the other owner. Things like that. I like what they did with the windows. They obviously featured all the colored glass because the colored glass won't turn a funny color like clear glass will. And what a vibrant way to get people into the door, right? And they have a bunch of childhood miniatures. This stuff sells really well. There are a lot of collectors for this. And it's not just women. A lot of men will put the kits together. A lot of grandfathers will buy these things for granddaughters because it's fun for both of them. So it's just really cool to see a lot of it in one place. A lot of these seem to be 1970s era, but for dollars and five dollars up to about 15 it's something that's collectible at a price that most people can afford oh, so the shop has a mascot yes <laughs> oh my goodness and this was on layaway at the old store and i can't believe you held it for all that time i i feel like i should just let you sell it and take the money if you thought you could <laughs> but if you would like i will get it out of your way right now really like this dealer who is this she's yeah. selling basically her father's collection oh so this is a collection how neat he had a great collection and it seems to be never ending she keeps bringing stuff wow i really like the big slicks hot rod t ford that's priced at 85 you really don't see those with the box olympia beer was made just up the road here in the state capitol and you had to send in i think it was box labels or something to get this so they're kind of hard to find and it's priced at 120. beautiful piece of stained glass here Love this piece. This looks like a Sasha Brostoff rooster. I wonder if it's possible that it is. What do they have this? Uh, oh, yes, they know it. Someone made it into a lamp. There's the Sasha B. I've had one of these once before. I had the 23-inch variety. It sold for more than the 450 they have on this lamp. That is an amazing piece, and you just rarely see them. I've seen 
three in my entire career. And I know people who knew Sasha Brostoff. That's how scarce they are. Artistic Potteries of California did these in the late 50s, early 60s. They've got a wall full of Pyrex and Kitchen. This is fun. So they really have a lot of the heavy hitters and things people are collecting now. Creels and baskets and fishing stuff and cowboy boots and hats. Definitely appropriate for this area. And a lot of 50s and 60s kitchenware. And this is the company that if I was gonna have a sponsor, I would hope it would be them. In fact, you know what? I'm gonna take this, this. It has their phone number on it because I really believe in their stuff. It is made of stuff that is not going to poison and toxify you or your furniture. You can do a lot of removing of scratches and stains and watermarks without having to actually sand a piece. So I am a believer and I'm glad that they're carrying a big wide variety of it. We used to at the old store and I'm glad they kept that up. And they have baskets. This is a great collection, and I have to say these are all much more important and in amazing condition. I have fun baskets, cute ones. They have serious ones. This is Thompson River. This one is a nice Nootka piece. This is unusual. This is a little baby cradle, and you can see the way that it is woven. This is from the Fraser River up in British Columbia. Another Thompson River basket. This is a very neat, unusual pattern on here. This dealer has been in business for many years. He really knows his stuff. He has access to good collections. This is a Skokomish basket priced at $9.50. Interesting, unusual handle basket. This is actually Eskimo. Lots of things are said to be Eskimo, but those really are. This is Lulouette, which is an area, tribal area that has a small town now up in the interior of British Columbia. So just some really great stuff. Macabre market basket with the handles. A bunch of smaller pieces here. You can just see the tightness of the weave, the quality, the mellowness of the color as it ages. It definitely separates it from African baskets. Here's a very nice quinault piece with the lid. These are very tightly done and really in good condition. The colors are strong. This is an old Tlingit bottle where they would weave over the bottle. That with the geometric is Pima from Arizona. And this one actually is a Puget Sound, probably Chehalis or close to this local area. Really neat kayak. Made out of actual skin, priced at $3.95. So he's just got the coolest stuff. And this is a very, very rare primitive era piece from the Nootka. This is an ads, priced at $3,500. Very hard to find the things they actually use that were not just made for tourists. He's just got some really, really great stuff. This is Clickitat, the Macaw Rain Hat. This is a very advanced collection of really neat stuff. Great Plains moccasins. This is Pima from the Southwest as well. The Southwestern designs tend to have the geometric shapes or human shapes. You see another piece here that's Pima. Sioux moccasins, that's a nice old pair there, very small feet. And this is an Eskimo doll. I just sold one of these for about the same price. They have 135 on it. Oh, this clock is just beautiful. And it's 1930s, you can tell by the face. It's a German chime clock. It's priced at 925. I have to say I sold one for about the same price that was not nearly so stylish and attractive with the tall case clocks not being super popular right now because it's a big piece of furniture and we live in the era of cell phones and computers where the time is in front of us all the time. You really need something that's a showstopper and has something unusual about it. And this piece, I think, qualifies. Love the color. That's neat. Well, there's even more great stuff in this place than I can show you. We are going to have to make it down the road now, but it's so cool that they are up and open and operating. Centralia is full of great antiques and vintage again, and I encourage you to come visit if you are at any point between Seattle and Portland. It's a great day trip. It's a fun place to visit if you're from out of town. And this time of year, well, it's one time of year we see a lot of local folks shopping here because it's a little dreary outside. So it's a great time to be inside. And interestingly enough, a lot of Alaskans come here because 
our nine or ten hours of daylight look great to them. So it's all relative. <laughs> if you enjoyed this video, check out this one. Also click thumbs up to like this video and check the description for information about our Patreon, our memberships. We've got a lot of different levels with different perks and bonus videos and early content. Also, please do check out our website, theantiquenomad.com for appraisal help. And we'll see you again for more adventures in the antique and vintage community soon. Bye for now.